This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Dell XPS with Infinity Display. Again, this is the late 2015 model, not to be confused with the very similar, almost identical early 2015 model we already covered. This is the model 9350. So what's different here? All the things we love are still here. Carbon fiber interior with backlit keyboard. Sharp IGSO display available as your higher resolution option. You can get the matte 1080p display and save yourself a lot of money too if you don't want a touch screen. Core i5, i7, i3 processors. A variety of prices starting at $799 going all the way up depending on how many bells and whistles you want. And it's incredibly small and light. It's a 13.3 inch laptop that is more like the size of a 12 inch. 2.8 pounds, highly portable, powerful, still good stuff. We're going to look at it now. So it's back, the Dell XPS 13, this time the 9350 model for late 2015. This is the Skylake Refresh, which is Intel 6th generation, 15 watt ULV Ultrabook CPUs versus the early 2015 model we looked at that had 5th generation. So not a lot has changed because this was a radical redesign for Dell, so why mess with a good thing? It was very well received, it's gorgeous, it's light, you know, <laughs> hey, Sometimes it's smart not to change things too much. So, same, you wouldn't be able to tell this one from the early 2015 model from the lid. Still the same, good looking. We got our metal alloy cover right here, and it, the footprint closer to a 12 inch laptop, also very light, well under three pounds. So, if you're looking for something highly portable, the non touch model is 2.6 pounds, the touch screen is 2.8 pounds. And this would be it. Yet yeah, it's a full powerful Ultrabook, no Intel Core M CPUs in here. Bottom has the silver look, again, part of the redesign, and we got eight Torx screws that hold the bottom cover on. We're not going to take this one apart and show you on screen what it looks like because it's the same as the last generation that we covered in the video review. In fact, I know our reviews are often very long. This one won't be too, too long because so much is the same here, so we won't go into great detail. Anyway, if you do happen to take the bottom cover off, there is your service tag here, tastefully hidden. Dell likes to do that. And then there's a little Phillips head screw here to remove too, so don't forget about that one. If you do open it up, RAM is soldered on board. You won't be able to upgrade it, so order it with the amount of RAM that you want. Most configurations have 8 gigs of RAM. You can go up to 16 gigs if you really need 16 gigs. Do order it that way. The SSD slot is socketed. It is an M2 slot in the machine, and the Wi-Fi card is socketed. Ventilation holes here, little rubber grippy things that are effective to stop it from sliding away on your airplane tray table or anywhere else. This is a conventional laptop. This is not a two-in-one convertible. It doesn't fold, tw twirl, do anything. This is as far back as the screen goes, and given the fact that these are IPS-level displays, a little different here. This is a sharp exo and also not exactly IPS technology, but anyway, similar enough. That's plenty of good viewing angle there. Even if you like to kind of kick it back some, I think it'll work out for you. Inside the same carbon fiber that we know and love from Dell. I like the feeling. It's very soft touch. It's very comfortable. The edges are not sharp and abrupt. For those of you who didn't like some of the MacBook designs, it did have the abrupt edges. Pretty comfy here. Big trackpad. Software has changed, so Dell's trackpads have improved, just like with the XPS 15 that we looked at with the Infinity Display. This is a very pleasant trackpad to use. I don't like it quite as much as the XPS 15, late 2015 model, but it's pretty darn good, and I do notice the improvement over the early one. Not that the early one was terrible, but it was more like your win typical Windows trackpad, which is to say not always awesomely perfect. This one tracks very reliably. It doesn't skitter around. It, well, that sort of thing. It's a pretty stiff clicker, though, so I find just the act of clicking sometimes will move my pointing figure away, and I'll miss what I want to click on. Not the end of the world. It's okay. Backlit keyboard with adjustments available here for your backlighting levels, and it's a skinny laptop, so it's not going to have a whole lot of travel. It's about 1.3 millimeters, not unlike the bigger XPS 15. It's a very comfortable keyboard. It's a fairly quiet keyboard you can hear there. Uh, I always like a little more travel when I can get it, but that said, I have no trouble adjusting to this keyboard, and I like it a lot as someone who does a lot of typing. If we look at this screen, uh, that's pretty much the showstopper, and 
This is the glossy 3200 by 1800 display. There's also, as with the early 2015 model, there is a 1080p matte non-touch display as an option too. That will save you some money if you really don't want a touch screen in your laptop. Obviously, since this isn't designed to be a convertible, touch isn't imperative, but for those of you who have a use for it, it's handy for things like Photoshop if you're doing masking and stuff like that and all that. But anyway, the option is yours. This time we have the 4K, and the last time we focused a lot on the 1080 P display more so than the high resolution model. So this time we're going to look at the high resolution model. It's a very pretty display. You can see it's very colorful. This is 99% of sRGB, 78% of Adobe RGB. So this is not the super wide color gamut that you find on the XPS 15, alas, but it's certainly very pleasant. And for those of you who do work for web, including graphics, sRGB is your target, so as long as you get your 99, 100% of, nothing really is 100, 99% usually, of sRGB, you're good to go for having accurate colors and all that sort of thing. Uh, unlike the Delta XPS 15 high gamut IGZO display, this one is not so skewed towards the very cold color temperatures, which is a uh, something, it's it's the nature of the display. That's not something you can change so much. A little bit you can with calibration. So here, we, our whites are not so blue-white, which is nice. What makes this look stunning is the Infinity display, which comes out nearly to the edge, which, uh, I mean, it's the hallmark of the product, honestly. And it's also quite rigid, too, which is nice. One of the difficulties of building a display all the way out to the edge is how to make it reinforced and strong enough. And there's enough metal going on in the back here to keep this pretty strong. So nice as ever. Also with the early XPS 13, early 2015 that is, uh, there was some kind of ambient light sensor that you really couldn't defeat. It was like built into firmware so sometimes it was, it bothered some folks because they could see the color getting, or the brightness getting a little bit darker in darker rooms. Now it's still pretty bright looking and stuff. It doesn't seem to be happening with this one at all so Dell probably heard all the people that were moaning about that and well, stopped doing that. So how much is this going to cost you? This starts at $799, let's call it $800. That is a very basic model. That is your Core i3 with 4 gigs of RAM and 128 gig SSD, the non-touch 1080p matte panel. By the way, in a 13.3 inch display, 1080p is a fine resolution. Might not be as ultra sharp, super high PPI, but honest to goodness, for most people's eyes and normal viewing angles, I think it's just fine. I am running this at the equivalent of 1080p, basically using scaling. So it is running at its native resolution. I'm using 200% scaling. So things are looking maybe a little bit small, but I, I like it that way. I like to see a lot on screen. You can adjust the scaling as you see fit. More and more programs are supporting Windows 10 scaling, including Adobe CC products, Office, of course, Microsoft products do. Uh, some legacy programs still won't, though, so it depends on what you're using. If you're using Java, for example, you might have some teeny fine fonts. Origin, oh my god, like, finally updated. Steam beat them to it by more than a year, so Origin is finally not super teeny weeny for you gamers. But this is not really a gaming laptop. This is an Ultrabook with integrated Intel 520 graphics, which do show an improvement over the fifth generation Broadwell. Honestly, the CPU hasn't shown much improvement, but it's the integrated graphics that have shown a bit of improvement. We'll talk about that in benchmarks. So, I mean, yes, you can play at low resolutions in some games and, and low settings, but this is not a gamer machine by any means. No Ultrabook really is. Of course, you can play Minecraft. You can play Diablo 3 on low settings, those sort of things, but Battlefield 4 at 1080p in high settings? No. This can't do that. For those of you who want to spend more money, there are Core i5 and Core i7 dual core options. All of these are Ultrabook CPUs, all with integrated graphics inside. We have the Core i5 6200U, 256 gig SSD and 8 gigs of RAM. You can go up to a 512 gig SSD. You can get a Core i7. You can get 16 gigs of RAM, and you can spend nearly $2,000 when you're doing it. Our machine with the touch panel, the Core i5, 256 gig SSD, and the 8 gigs of RAM is $1,400 on Dell's website. Now you can wait for them to have some coupons. You can also check places like Best Buy that often sell it for 100 maybe even more dollars less. Micro Center also does for companies in the United States. So if you shop around, you can get it a little bit cheaper. So ports, that's one thing that's changed a little bit. And we saw this on the XPS 15 as well. You still have your little charging connector right there. 
you have, aha, this is the USB-C slash Thunderbolt 3 port, just like on the XPS 15, a very forward looking feature because there aren't many peripherals. It's still hard to find cables and adapters for that technology. It replaces the mini display port. So those of you, and this is a kind of pro and business oriented laptop, you probably do have a monitor with a display port. You start scrambling and looking for cables and adapters. Now it's, it's a headbanging experience, I can tell you, but they are out there, USB-C to DisplayPort 1.4. And we have a USB 3.0 port as well, right there. Headphone jack, the usual button you press to see your battery status. So speaking of that adapter right here, this is Dell's $75 adapter, which will actually work with other things too. So it plugs into the USB-C port. This is their $75 USB-C adapter. That gives you Ethernet, another USB 3.0 port, HDMI, 2.0 awesomeness. So if you want to drive a 4K display at 60 hertz, that HDMI 2.0 is important. And a legacy VGA port, little rubber thing that collects dust, tucks in here. Handy dandy little device, you might need one of these. Now on the other side, not as much to see right here. We have the SD card slot, we have another USB 3.0 port, and we have a lock slot right there. So you got two USB ports. And there's our little speaker grill right there. Now one thing to note with all Dell's Infinity Display models, because there is like no bezel, just about, uh, the, the webcam is not up top. You have a chin cam instead. It's down in this corner right here. It will feature your left nostril on the underside of your chin. So and for those of you who do a lot of video chat, keep that in mind. It's slightly weird. I mean, it still gets the job done. It's just a little weird. Anyway, on to performance. We have a fast PCIe SSD NVMe. And you can see the, the numbers here are pretty darn good, particularly that read number right there that is Good. In fact, it's doing a little bit better than our XPS 15, which had a one terabyte SSD inside. Now for PC Mark 8, we do the home accelerated test and you can see our score right there, 2778, which is pretty close to the core i5 early 2015 model. Going one from Intel fifth generation to sixth generation Broadwell to Skylake really doesn't get you a whole lot of improvement. Once again, Intel has been focusing on reducing heat and reducing power usage instead. Now with 3 d Mark, that's where things get a little bit more interesting. And we see this is the CloudGate test, which is a bit more demanding, 5742. That's, that's not a bad number, and that shows some improvement as well. Now here for our ice storm test, you can see we scored 47,195. Now for 3 d Mark 11, it scored for the performance test 15 29 and the last gen model scored 1101 where higher numbers are better so there you go it did get a bit faster in the graphics department it, it's another thing that intel's been working on is making their hd graphics faster uh, more so than improving cpu speed w prime computed pi in 19.1 seconds which is a little bit better than the 19.8 seconds for the last generation which is cpu dependent there but that's probably has more to do with chipset tuning and other things as well too geekbench 3 Single core test 2953, multi core 5440, which is about the same as the early 2015 model. So, again, those little bit of graphics improvements are what you're getting here. Not so much on the CPU. We do get a bit less heat and fan noise. Now, the, the XPS 13 early model was not exactly a vacuum cleaner. It wasn't super loud. It wasn't disgustingly hot or anything like that. But this one is a little bit cooler and quieter. When we do things like run all these crazy benchmarks on the machine, that's a pretty good test of making it hot. And the fan is less annoying sounding. It, it's tuned better. It doesn't make quite as much noise. Yet temperatures still say about the same. This does not thermal throttle considerably, which is pretty impressive because the ventilation is not, you know, it's, it's reasonably modest right there where you've got. It does manage to stay fairly cool. Metal conducts more than the carbon fiber they used to use. So you will be a hot spot right over here, say, if you are trying to play something like Bioshock Infinite, some 3D game or something like that, it can get a little too hot to be comfortable in this area for playing a game. If you're doing productivity work or Photoshop, that's not going to happen. Again, the fan, not as loud or annoying as it was before. And it doesn't throttle. I mean, we had the CPU go up to 88 degrees and it didn't throttle, which is pretty toasty, 88 degrees centigrade. Close, not too dangerously close to the thermal ceiling, which is 100, but toasty. Inside we have, well, they call it 
Dell Wi-Fi. It's actually Broadcom Wi-Fi, 811 AC dual band with Bluetooth 4.1. And the reception is okay. It's not bad. We, we got a little, our little signal indicator right here. And that's a little bit weaker than some of the other Ultrabooks that we've reviewed recently, but it's not deal breaker lower. How about streaming on our Wi-Fi connection? You can hear the speakers. This, I swear to God, has better audio than the XPS 15. And it's the little guy, so it's pretty surprising. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Here's what you've been waiting for. This is the 2015 Dell XPS 15 Infinity model with the Infinity Display, HD edge display, in other words. So that's at 64% volume right there. That's very loud, full, and clear. It sounds quite nice. Good job there. So how about battery? By the way, this is what the charger looks like. Dell's usual curvy, attractive kind of cute thing, and you can wrap the cord around the body of the charger and all that sort of thing. Lots of cord length here, so no problem if the outlet is far away from you. The battery is 56 watt hour. That's up a little bit from the early 2015 model, which was 52 watt hour, and Skylake should bring some battery life improvements there, and we saw a little bit of improvement. Now, the Energizer Bunny in our last review, and most other folks found this too, is the 1080p matte display it consumes considerably less pow power than the high resolution model. We do have the high resolution model in, and so far it's been good with brightness set to 50%, which is fairly adequate. Dell claims this is a 400 nit display, by the way. Our colorimeter can't read the IXO display panel very well, and it thinks that it's much lower than it possibly could be because it just looks a lot brighter. But anyway, keeping it about 40% brightness with Wi-Fi on and active, we manage about seven hours with the high resolution touch screen model. And I would expect the 1080p matte model to be just like the early 2015 and to probably go for 10 hours on a charge, which is considerably better, isn't it? And again, because this is the laptop that appeals to laptop people who don't want convertibles and all that fancy sort of stuff, if you go with the 1080p model, you're going to save yourself some money and you're going to get better battery life. And well, there it is. If you're looking for your conventional standard laptop design, doesn't do any fancy dancy bending and twiddling kind of tricks. It is just a really light premium laptop with a very nice keyboard attractive display, good performance, and good cooling. I would say that this is still one of the laptops to be in the 13-inch segment. So that's the Dell XPS 13, the late 2015 edition with Intel Skylake inside. It's as good as ever, and in fact, uh, the trackpad is improved. Graphics performance is a little bit better. I mean, it's still integrated graphics. You can only get so much with that. And Battery life is about the same, actually, as the early 2015 model. So it's nice incremental improvements, little updates, things that Dell fixed, the, the strange display brightness that you really couldn't control and the power management involved. Those problems are gone, and it's still one of my favorite laptops ever. I mean, it's so portable. It's so good-looking. It's so well-made, and it gets the job done. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.